I am Pox. <laughs> Couch guy. I'm Ziggy. And you're watching the Two Smart Guys get Two Smart Guys show. <laughs> Today's a good show. Yeah. We're I'm at, done ranting. We're going to talk about Hackintoshes. Yeah, we usually talk about hacking phones, cameras, all kinds of fun things, making them better. Just breaking stuff. Or, or just doing things on the cheap. And in today's episode, we're going to be making a Mac Pro, but like way cheaper. Yeah, like why <laughs> spend five grand on something that you could do for what? Like 500 bucks. 500 bucks? Yeah. Why? They work just as well. It's, it's fast. Crazy. This show is made on a Hackintosh. The show is made on this $500 Hackintosh, by the and way. It's, you know, it does, it does hack. The Hackintosh does a really good job. Right. So we've done episodes before on doing the Hackintosh. And uh, the process is similar, but they threw a wrench into the works. And there's no physical media for the new Lion OS. Well, and that and the fact that every time there's a system upgrade in that manner, when they change like to um, oh, Snow system. Leopard and things like that, they, they had a pro every Your Hackintosh will have issues at first. And it's just right. a matter of getting everything back to compatibility. Yeah. So uh, Tony Mac, um, he's got these great utilities. Uh, the new one is XMove, and I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to uh, up to do actually a fresh install from the ground up, building a Hackintosh and installing the OS. Well, before you install something, you should always back it up. Oh, that's right. Well, that's because right. backing up is a major right. Because whenever you whenever you upgrade your Hackintosh. And you do the littlest thing wrong. You risk losing everything. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a fact of life. If you if you were to move major operating systems, you risk losing it. Investing Here's how you install your Hackintosh. It's awesome. All right, in building our new Lion Hackintosh, you're going to need a few things. Uh, any computer really in the past couple of years should be good as long as it's an Intel 64-bit processor, um, one of the later Radeon or NVIDIA cards, and you need to make sure and purchase a Lion retail DVD. I mean a you need to go ahead and purchase a Leopard retail DVD and get a Mac store account so that you, you can buy Lion. All right, so we have to install Snow Leopard before we install Lion because right now that's the best working method that works for everybody. Uh, what you need to do is go into your BIOS and make sure the hard drives are set to ACHI mode, download iBoot, burn it to a, a DVD or a CD, and then boot from it, swap the disk out with the real Snow Leopard DVD, boot from that, install it, boot back from the iBoot DVD, run the latest combo update, and then run Multi Beast. Next, after it reboots, you can go ahead and install Lion. So log into the App Store, purchase it, go ahead and install it, even let the system reboot. Now, when you log back into your Snow Leopard install, you can go into the disk utility and you can make a new 8 gigabyte partition. The nice thing about the Macs are that you can do a live resize of the partition without destroying any data, so you don't have to worry about losing anything. As long as you have free space, just hit plus and then make a new partition 8 gigabytes and name it Installer. Next, we'll use this cool utility by Tony Mac called XMove. An XMove will copy over all the necessary installation files from Lion over to the new 8 gigabyte partition. So just make sure you select to install on the new partition that we created and let it run. Don't do anything else on your Mac while it's running. And then reboot and from the launcher pick the new installer partition. And then you can just install just like it's a regular Macintosh. You can either install over the top of your existing Snow Leopard installation, or you can install to a new hard drive or partition for just a brand spanking new Lion installation. Either way works fine. All right, after it's installed, you'll just need to update the system to the latest patch. You want to check Tony Mac and make sure that it's okay and it's not going to destroy anything. So go ahead and run the update, but don't don't reboot the system. You need to download multi beast run multi beast <laughs> depending on your system there might be different things you want to install but usually easy beast is the best solution uh, you may have to look for a particular ktext file for your network card like I had to or, or possibly your sound but you can always add those later just to get the basics going usually the easy beast is the way to do it 
So just remember, whenever you're running an update, don't restart the system. Install MultiBeast first. <laughs> and if you have another working partition, you could always run MultiBeast from that working partition and, and put the install directory to your not working partition to fix it. Anyways, you should have a working line installation and have fun with it. Alright, so that's the, those are the steps. It's fairly straightforward, although, you know, there's always kinks depending on your system. Just do research. The best thing to do is research and see if you're looking into buying something and you it may or may not have been previously yeah. supported, just look for it because this stuff's all online. Yeah, there's all uh, kinds of Tony Mac sites all this got, stuff. got yeah. good forms on there with list of hardware that people have used and worked well for them. And now we've got kinds of pro all kinds of projects in the works. Um, I know that we're working on free NAS. I know we say that, we've been saying that for months. We really are working on free NAS. We can be distracted by DEF CON and things like that. We've got, we got some Wi-Fi stuff that we've been working on for about a year. Wi-Fi is had some problems because we need winter, <laughs> because trees, trees killed us on this the trees. Um, I'm, I'm still looking for my, you know, a next big project. We gotta try some Arduino stuff at some point, I think. Or I need to learn some Arduino. Yeah, that's true. And I'm curious whether or not people, what people really want to know. Like, are they interested? Like, I'm big on Linux. There was a request for another Mac. for another Nook. I saw the Nook stuff. I haven't found a really good Nook hack lately. Mm -hmm. um, ever, there's not really a whole lot except for just doing it into an Android. You know, as soon as it becomes an Android. Kindle tablet. people asking. We don't have a Kindle though. But yeah, but what do you want to do on a Kindle? Uh, it's a it's it's a black and white screen. Do you guys do you guys read Make Make magazine? I do. That's that's a resource that is great. Because and that's honestly some of the projects are probably where our Arduino stuff are going to come out of is yeah. some of the Make magazine stuff converted yeah. towards some of our Wi-Fi or you know because um, we were think we were talked about the X10 systems for a little while, and <laughs> and then I watched went to DEF CON and watched them destroy X10 systems. Um, but I don't think that's a deterrent. You can make a little box, plug it into the outlet, and kill, fantastic. kill the entire house. <laughs> like everything on X10 is like, boop. Um, but I think the Arduino plus X10 has some weird things, some really cool things because... Or Android, know, apparently, or an iPhone. Yeah, Android and iPhones. Because like um, things like, uh, I would like to have a way that I could have my house be monitoring a tweet, Twitter uh, account and tweet a request to my house, be it code or whatever, you know, however you, and it sends back the temperature of the house, the doors are confirmed locked and things like that. All that stuff is possible right. through X10 and with the Arduino response system, you know, here and there. Um, I don't think it's that complicated, depending on what your code in and out, how it monitors it, well, but. There are so many projects in Make Magazine that will, will help you learn these things. And in fact, Make Magazine is, is turning around Radio Shack. They were really the only store where you could get parts for electronics. And for they, 400 times they the price. In the past, yeah. have been turning away from that and getting into more selling computers. Consumer electronics. Consumer electronics, yeah. Yeah. And they, it, there's been kind of a resurgence now, and they're starting to push more do, DIY stuff. Well, really that, it brings up an interesting thing that we haven't really talked much about, but if we do a project where it involves getting a kit, and making a kit of something, is it worth it for you guys to try and buy it from us, or is it better just to get a parts list? You know, what's, because sometimes if we were to buy, like you get like 100 ICs for one one hundredth the cost, if you buy 100. Yeah, you go to DigiKey and, right. yeah. And, yeah. And so like if, <laughs> and some of those things like that where we're building like a board, we could send you an IC set, but we don't, you know, we don't see that much of a feedback loop from our viewers to like know that that would actually pay off because in reality, it may cost us 30 bucks to get the four or five ICs we would use for all of us to play with it, break it, destroy it a couple times while we're doing it. Yeah. But it may cost us $130 to get 100 of them, play with it, and then get stuck with 85 or 90 that we could pay, you know, to sell or give away or as prizes and things like that. But I don't know. It, we need a better, better response out of the crowd because right now we've had a little bit here and there. They like PSP stuff. They really like some... Um, Xbox and 360 things, but none of those things are really like maker projects. Nobody's really responded off of major pro maker projects. Yeah. Um, I really want to play with like how to make, like we talked about um, instructional kind of stuff. Like I'm a big Linux person. 
Um, I'm not super good at Linux, but I really like Linux compared to other things. And I think there's Linux can do things that people don't even understand. There's always Lenny Linux. <laughs> Lenny Linux. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but you know, with a, you know, but Linux and Mac really, yeah, really interact really well. Hand in hand. Yeah, and because if you have a if you have a Mac, you can do a lot of the same code stuff in terminal that you can do in Linux yeah, because they're the same. Right they have the same great grandfather in Unix. Um, like the other day, we transferred. I forgot to bring some files over. And so I I just transfer some stuff securely that way, and it's you know. You know, two I, days still wasn't as quick as you just going to your house and grabbing it. I no, <laughs> it would have been going to my house, spending two and a half hours. Transferring it, bringing it over. I didn't have time to bring it over. But you have to admit, for what? What was it? 16 gigs, 18 gigs of stuff? Yeah. No, it was more than that. I, I didn't even look. I think it was 26. Yeah. It was 26 gigs. I just was like, okay, please transfer securely. Click. And it was. It was done. Like DD, for instance. If somebody understood DD a little better, like I use DD to make ISOs. You ever try to copy some of those restricted files? Like, for instance, I was trying to make a digital backup of um, Snow Leopard the other day at work, thinking, oh, well, I can just go in there and make an ISO of it and transfer it. No. The Mac, like, gave me the finger. Yeah, it didn't let you do it? Well, it let me do it. It told me it did it. And then see what happens when you try and install from it. I was like, there's no files here. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I was like, you bastard. So then I went, like, da -da -da, DD. And it's like, it just stripped it right out. It's hmm. really fast, it's really nice. And it, it's actually got a nickname of Disk Destroyer because if you hit the wrong hash mark or things like that, you can actually cook your system. I knew but, a girl named Dee Dee once. Yeah, Debbie does. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Would instructional things, like how to do this or how to do that, because like I run a media center that's different than your media center at home. They both do the same thing, oh, you but know, differently. You know what I found out? I was looking at my Apple TV and XBMC, and they have a plug-in for um, Myth. Yeah. A lot of people have And it allows them. you to watch live TV. So you, you have your back-end Myth, and you have your tuners in it, mm -hmm. and on your little Apple TV, you can use it to browse live TV, That's watch the awesome DVR. Yeah. So now I really want to, I do want to do a Myth box. Options. So I figured out a riddle. What is Couch Guy's Imaging utility of choice. That is the riddle. Good, that's a good one. So if, if you know the answer because you listened about five minutes ago, email me, Pox Two Smart Guys. I'll send you a Two Smart Guys sticker. Hey, there you <laughs> go. How do you? How do I make ISOs? The awesome way. That's how. And I, the problem is like I have other Some ways. Some girl I met years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's a legitimate question. And we haven't really found the answer to that. It's like, mm. um, what do? The viewers want, and we try and get them out of the chat. The chat ignores us when we start asking. Yeah, we, we used to do a lot, a lot of like PSP hacking and iPhone hacking, but it's it, it, no it, it just it, it became just a cat and mouse game of how do you run this jailbreak or that jailbreak, and the process was always the same, and and everybody and their brothers doing it now. Now everybody's so, doing yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. we're trying and, to get in into reality, some more unique projects. Doing, there's a lot of people who are doing how-to stuff, like how to so we wanna, do this in Linux, we do how to do that, this in Mac that other people have not done, like the free NAS box. Well, that, that's like, the engineers at Sony recognized me from that video. They're like, hey, you did that video on the free NAS yeah, box. And the thing it's is, like, doesn't Sony make some kind of a NAS box? See, here's, here's, <laughs> here's my, my cerebrum thinking. You take all these parts, like free NAS, Myth TV, all these things that we, X10, things that we talk about, and talk about how to add them functionally into your life instead of how to... You know, just here, here's your phone, it's one device, we crack it. Oh, guess what, now you can run this on another system. It's only one part of it. Let's start playing with different features that add into the entire spectrum of, you know, what is the lifestyle of someone who is this tech savvy? You know, what kind of cool stuff can you get into? Because, like, frankly, my entire house right now is completely different now that I've gotten, you know, completely integrated with the Western Digital Box and the... You know, the server in the back end, things like that. I know that you watch TV completely different now than you did three years ago. I think we all do if we, you know, when you start looking at the IP stuff. and We watch a lot of Netflix myself just because it's... Well, and it's, yeah. you know, Hulu. in reality... Well, in reality... Ah, see? I hate Hulu. It was... I like Hulu. I, it was good. It was, it was good. fantastic. It, 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 yeah, we haven't watched it a lot what, at, at all lately. I just was listening to uh, a thing about how Hulu... Um, 
is in trouble, and they have to Hulu, Netflix, and everybody else is having to create their own content. Right. So there's a huge amount. Netflix of, is buying web content now. Yeah, big time. Like they want. So I like you, Netflix. Netflix is fine. <laughs> Contact me, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think I think having even if it's just free to air antenna, most people can say I can put up an antenna and I'll watch it. But yeah. I don't. I'm not there physically to watch the shows. That's why Hulu. Exists. You know what the best quality of TV is? Is the over air, over is. the over the air because digital we can HD broadcast TV broadcast uncompressed oh, yeah. as uncompressed as it more less compressed. Yeah. Let's put this less compressed. It's a clean MPEG two and it's a high bit rate. Yeah. The, all the cable yeah. providers, all the satellite providers, are going to this yeah. MPEG four really low bit rate most well, of the time. Well, and even if we go to MPEG four with over the air, we're still going to be broadcasting at 18 megabits per second. Which would be even better. Which is even a better look than MPEG-2 at 18 megabits per second, which is what you get right now. Um, so if you get, like right now, we don't get that many. We get four channels. Mo like you know, nobody knows Lake, where you work. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, in Salt, Lake, uh, in Salt Lake, you get like 12, you know, because there's all kinds of different things like that. So like an over-the-air antenna with a little bit of um, Mythbuntu action could actually get you free access to a huge amount of TV that you could record. And apparently, um, your cable TV also gives out HD channels that you can use on the Mythbuntu box. Yeah. Well, if you if you have to be able to get the you have to get a higher end package. No, the local channels, the HD versions of it, are supposed to be free over the cable line. Yeah, they're not right now. I can tell you that because I've scanned through my. Really? Oh, yeah. No. They're not. Maybe just for me then. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody gets free cable. No, I don't know who that'd be. Anyways, we're gonna wrap this up. Get, this is getting really long. <laughs> free cable too. We have we have only internet Stream access. Stream yeah. get Some stations free over the cable. Yeah. It, most cable you're, companies you're when you're supposed to stuff, get, get the local channels. Local free. Yeah. And mine didn't get hooked up right. So no the moral of the story is we want to know what you want to know. Do you want to what you want to do? Do you want us to just focus on the PSP iPhone BS that you know is everybody's doing? Um, and because we'll keep doing it. It's not like we have no problem with doing that. But or do you want more? Do you want something instructional, different than what we're doing now? Or what is it? Leave do your I, leave your comments below. Do I offend? <laughs> Direct them at Couch Guy. I don't care. I don't. <laughs> I, I stopped responding. I'm send wild. letters. Yeah, send letters. I'd like to post them on the wall. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, we would like your feedback. Any any kind of yeah, suggestions. I just kind of want to know what people are into because I know what I'm into and I'll I'll pursue that. But it's not necessarily what you guys are into. And the best way you, get, you can help us out is by either checking out our sponsors and uh, subscribing to the feed, so we know how many people are watching the show. Go and to iTunes, hit subscribe, and let it download. It's it gives the numbers that we need. See you guys next week. Every Monday. New 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 stuff at Two Smart Guys.